there's a number of concepts, and they're somehow sometimes difficult to, to distinguish. But there's a concept in translation which is called false friends. And, and I think it's a great concept to talk about today. We have Michael Root in the audience, and Michael Root is a true friend I'm in. for me, for you. Um, I, I've actually known Michael longer than I've known Keith. And, <laughs> That's a long time. And I consider him a true friend. Mm -hmm. But false friends is this concept in language when you have a word that appears in multiple languages, but it has different meanings in those other languages. And I'll give you an example in, um, oh, here's a great example in between English and Spanish. Um, you know, I live in the greatest Spanish-speaking country in the world, Texas. You call it a Spanish-speaking country? It is. Um, <laughs> and uh, in, in Spanish, there's, an, and I apologize for the Spanish speakers because I don't actually speak Spanish. Oh. But in English, if you say uh, a woman is embarrassed, what do you mean? She's ashamed. Right. If you say in Spanish she's embarrassed, uh, embarrassada or however it's pronounced, you mean she's pregnant. So there is an, and, and there's no question that those two words come from a common linguistic origin, but they mean completely different things. And why do they mean different things? We can look into the reasons, it's a bit complicated. But the point is that this is a very common thing where you have a word that's common to two different languages mm -hmm. and it means completely different things. And they're not completely different. Mm -hmm. Maybe a woman gets pregnant when she wasn't supposed to be and so she's embarrassed, right? Maybe that's the origin, I actually don't know. I'm not an expert on the origins of, of English or Spanish words. But I could tell you in Hebrew, we have examples of that between Hebrew and other Semitic languages. Mm -hmm. And here's where things can get complicated, where the translator can be a traitor. So we have in Hebrew the word lechem, mm -hmm. which is, for example, in the name of the place, Beit lechem, lechem, house of bread. Mm -hmm. Lechem in Hebrew means bread. Well, the same exact word in Arabic, lachem, it's the same three-letter root, same word, it's a slightly different pronunciation. Lachem doesn't mean bread, it means meat. Mm. So there's an example of a, a false friend uh, where it means one thing in one language but another thing in another language. There they're very closely related. They're so closely related where there's passages in the Tanakh where it talks about somebody eating bread, or lechem, I should say, and it's clear in the context they're eating meat. Mm -hmm. And where, why is that? Because lechem means, really, if you look at all the Semitic languages, you find out lechem really means, not in Hebrew or, or Arabic, right? Well, it, mm -hmm. there it means bread and meat. But the primary meaning in Semitic languages is a basic food substance. Mm. So if you're an Israelite dirt farmer who grows grain, your primary food substance is wheat. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're an uh, Arab shepherd who doesn't have, you know, out in Arabia, who doesn't have any um, land where he can grow wheat because it doesn't sustain that kind of, of agriculture, it sustains sheep and goats, your primary food substance is meat, mm -hmm. right? So, so there's an example of, now if I come along and I try to translate Beit Lechem, and I translate it because maybe I don't know Hebrew that well. Maybe I'm an Arab translator, mm -hmm. and I translate it house of meat. Yeah. Am I wrong? Well, I don't know. Beit Lechem might be a Canaanite name. And now we've got to ask the question, what does it mean in Canaanite? Right. Does it mean house of bread or house of steak? Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> Steakhouse. <laughs> Steakhouse, right. <laughs> right. And, and, so, and so that's where language and translation's really complicated. Yes. Yes. And and it can and, and it is because you have different languages with different meanings. There's a famous example of something we call lexical division. Mm -hmm. Lexical division is this idea that you'll have a word that has multiple meanings in each language, and in the other language it has multiple meanings, and it's not always a one-to-one -one correspondence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so for there's a famous example is the word in Hebrew kadur means a ball, mm -hmm. but it also means a pill, mm -hmm. like a aspirin would be called a kadur. But kadur also means a bullet. Mm -hmm. So the famous uh, apocryphal story is the Israeli soldier is in the bus station and he sees the foreign tourist, this poor woman. She's holding her head in her, her hand and it hurts so much. And he walks up with his M16 and he says, eh, what you need is a bullet for your head. <laughs> and she's horrified. She's about to get killed, she thinks. And what he really means is she needs an aspirin. 
right? So, so translation is a complicated <laughs> right, thing, right. and 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 then when you add to that that people have agendas, say agendas, Agenda. now it gets really complicated. Yeah. yeah.